What is good, you to Quinn Wade? Basketball analysis and analysisplayground.com founder coming to y'all with another video. I know I disappeared for a couple days, but I'm back and we're going to talk about the number one projected pick, my guy, K. Cunningham. A guy that didn't win the national championship, but locked down that number one spot years ago and has been able to keep it and has proven that he's a special player as he went to the college level with not so much talent around him and made the team competitive and fun to watch just because he was so dominant and just absolutely fun and exciting um, to see. But one thing that's crazy about Kay Cunningham before we get into it is nobody really have too much doubts about him. Um, everybody respects him. Everybody seeming like they like him. Everybody seeming like once he get better players around him at the NBA level and more space around him, obviously at the NBA level compared to what he played with in college, that his playmaking and his scoring ability and his, you know, perimeter ability is just going to translate seamlessly and we see the same thing with Luca. Luca obviously had a decent rookie season was able to build upon it and have two back-to-back all NBA caliber seasons so far but people doubted him did he reach his ceiling will he be able to create and all those was pretty much answered for him as a rookie now we're starting to see can he lead a team to a title and that's the thing about Kay Cunningham. Kay Cunningham isn't the most dominant scorer, isn't the most unstoppable scorer, but he still is very young and he still, you know, has a lot of room for improvement and growth as he gets to this next level and he, he gets adjusted and, you know, he grows his body even better, you know, to adapt to the NBA game because you're going against grown man, better athletes, better size, better, better athleticism. Um, but the question for Cade is that, can K be the number one option on a championship team? That's what I'm looking for if I'm the Thunder. That's what I'm looking for if I'm the Orlando Magics or the Houston Rockets is if I add this guy, will he impact winning at the highest level? And that's why I brought up Luka is because people feel like Luka wasn't going to get significantly better, you know, as a player. And he was not even, nine, he wasn't even 20 when he got into the league. And we've seen Tim have an uh, incredible season as a sophomore, getting even better than he was as a rookie, and leading the Mavs to potentially two straight playoff appearances in the tough Western Conference. And when you're looking at a guy like Cade, you have to kind of figure out and gauge as, as a GM, as a development guy, what are we getting and what are we going to be able to build around? Because when you're getting number one pick, this guy – is a pillar. This guy is a fundamental piece to the success of your future. And a lot of these teams are good already. I think that's the best part about Cade is a lot of these teams record say they are terrible. But when you look at the talent that a lot of these teams have outside of Detroit, not to be bogus, but it's true. A lot of these teams have special players already that are young or veterans that will just help make K job a lot easier as they have already, you know, been great players or they still are. So even if you look at a team like Washington, he'll be perfect there. You look at a team like Houston, he'll be a perfect three um, to go alongside John Wall, Christian Wood, and Kevin Porter Jr. You even look at a team like Oklahoma City, having Teo and Pokashevsky and Shea Gilge is already a 20-point scorer. This team has already won 20 games without without a guy like K just coming in. Plus, they have other picks which will allow them to move up or allow them to trade for another piece or will allow them to get a piece in future drafts that they can put right alongside Shea and other guys that they already have developing who will also be better in the future because Oklahoma City – can move them or they can find a way to give them ample playing time to, you know, get to where they need to be to where, you know, you can build around them with Cade and, you know, they're already competitive and already exciting and intense type of team. Plus they have a coach that really understands them because the Oklahoma City games are competitive. 
It's not like they're getting blow out by the worst margins every game. They actually fighting. They actually competitive when healthy. And I think that's another thing that's good about Cade is he's not going to a team that is so bottomless and so hopeless. He has a lot of opportunities where he can be possibly in the playoffs as a rookie, depending on what else the team decides to do that summer in free agency as long as I getting him at the number one spot. But I watched some games from Cade, and I am excited for him to make the transition because he has a lot of tangibles. He's not scared to take over. He's not scared of the big moments. He is a guy that is very confident in his abilities. He has the potential to be a three-level scorer at the NBA level, being able to hit the three on and off the ball while also being able to hit floaters and mid-range jump shots and also being a great free throw shooter, which you want your perimeter players to be a guy that can, you know, pick up our defenses depending on what team you have around them and what pieces. But a lot of these teams already have floor spacers or bigs that can do good screens or even hit down, hit perimeter shots, which make K job a lot more easier. Just really about reading and reacting and just making the right decision. And that's something that he will learn and grow as he get acclimated to the NBA level and the personnel that's around him and they build that chemistry. So K to me, his biggest question is if I draft him number one, can he be that number one option that drives me to a title? I think that's the biggest thing that I will want to see from him. And, and even Luka, he's been able to get them to the playoffs, but he hasn't been able to get them to the second round. He hasn't been able to get them to the finals. He hasn't been able to get that far, even though he still is young. Those are still things that he has to prove because um, he's so often compared to Luka. And I feel like K is an amazing player right now, especially if his defense can translate and he has that heart and that motor that just makes him desirable for most organizations. But when you look at this draft, it's a lot of guys that has a lot of potential and has a lot of NBA-ready skills at such a young age. And this is why it's such a rich draft because some of these guys are so versatile and they have multi-impact on the game already at the level that they have played on and you put them with smarter coaches smarter and better more you know high iq type of players around them then that just makes them grow and makes their job easier and allows them to be more set into what they need to do instead of trying to find everything that they have to do just because they don't have enough around them. So K had to, you know, take more tougher shots. He had to do more things that he won't have to do at the NBA level. But the difficulty is going to be the tough part, playing against better competition, guys that's going to be prepared for you, and then you had a disadvantage because you have to learn what works and what doesn't work. It's part of the growing pains of becoming something special in the league because it's just a new level and you have to be ready to go. And... You know, outside of that, K, he looks like an NBA-ready prospect. He has the NBA-ready body, and he has the mentality that you would need. You would like him to pick it up a little bit more, but you also don't want to, you know, think that a player is going to come out and be this perfect player. So he's going to have his flaws. He's going to have his down flaws, downside, just like every other superstar in the league. But Cade already knows his game. He already knows who he is. And he already has shown that he can be a significant difference maker um, on any level that he plays. Now it's just about figuring out what team will get him and how will they build a team around him. Because if K can be a 25, 30 point scorer that can take over and dominate on every level of the court efficiently, which we don't know yet, um, it's going to be interesting to see what you try to do as building a team around him to help you get to that championship level but I think he's going to be very interesting within the first two years because he's going to have that hype and that anticipation of you know being a number one pick and he's going to have 
you know, the hype of trying to make a team go from at the bottom to the top. And it's all about staying steady, staying focused and locked in, loving and enjoying the development and the passion for the game to keep putting in the work to get to your ultimate goal, which is being the best player that you can be. And then it's just about having the right team built around you so you can try to win and compete for titles. And that's the toughest part because it's out of your control as the GM and the owner has the power over that. You just have to do your job and encourage your teammates and go out there and play as hard as you can to influence winning. You only can really control what you do at the end of the day. And that's the only thing that you can really, you know, live with at the end of the day um, as a player. So to me, I'm excited about him. I have no hate for him. I have no real doubts about him. Besides, is this the guy that can lead you to a title um, as the number one pick? And I'm not even really doubting it. I'm just saying I got to see it just because this guy is supposed to be this phenomenal, you know, guy that's undeniable. And I'm like, okay, I see it. I see why y'all like him. I see why he's heralded as the best player in his draft and NBA ready at that. But it is also a whole different game when you competing against super teams. <laughs> it's a whole different game when you go into the West or the Eastern Conference. That just changes everything because we don't know what team going to pick them yet. And it also does change depending on what teammates you have around you and what type of ownership has you because some don't care about winning titles. They just care about being relevant. They just care about making the playoffs. And that is something that you have to deal with if you get drafted to that type of team, which is unknown now because the draft lottery hasn't happened yet. So other than that, let me know what you guys think. Is Cade a significant difference maker? Can Cade be the number one option, finals MVP type of guy? And if you had Cade as your general manager, as a general manager, what type of players would you put around him? What type of point guard you need? What kind of center you need? What type of, you know, power forward you need to help him get to the best level that he can play with a certain talent that he'll need around him to get the job done, which is holding the Larry O'Brien trophy for possibly the team that drafts him. So he, he he is highly heralded, and I can't wait to see him in the NBA. But, you know, I also do wonder, is K coming to him that guy? Is he the franchise? Is he that once-in-a-generational player that you can't pass up because he's destined for greatness? Is he that? We have to wait and see. But that's the fun part. We get to look forward to that. We get to watch it grow up in front of us. And hopefully he has a successful career and, you know, you know, live up to the hype at the end of the day. I don't want to see him fail. I don't want to see him struggling. But that's just a process of being great and, and becoming and overcoming those doubts to become the player that you want to be and achieving the ultimate team success. Other than that, Quinn Wade, basketball analysis, I'm gone. Support the movement. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Merchandise is on Facebook and also on my spread shirt. I'm going.